Happy Friday, Rosa Parks. It is Friday, December 11th, 2020. Oh, I don't know what that is. At this time, please uh, stand for the Pledge of Allegiance today, led by Mrs. Wegeson's class. Great job, Mrs. Wegeson's class. Boys and girls, please remain standing for your moment of silence. So today for our moment of silence, I want us to think about one person that we can say something nice to today. So maybe it's your brother or sister. Maybe it's a grandparent who lives far away. But maybe you could give them a call or you could tell them something nice. Give them a compliment. So let's take a few seconds, bow our heads, think quietly to ourselves about who is someone that we could maybe say something nice, give a compliment to. Let's bow. Great job, boys and girls. You may be seated. Parents, don't forget that next week, uh, our food services department will be serving lunch available uh, from 12 to 1 each day at the elementary schools and from 12 to 1230 at several of the apartment complexes in Perry Township. Um, if you, um, Monday's lunch is chicken tenders, graham crackers, corn, canned peaches, and milk. We have no students celebrating a birthday today, but we do have some students celebrating a birthday over the weekend. A special happy birthday over on Saturday the 12th to Alani Glass, and a special happy birthday on December 12th to Joshua Tang. I hope you friends have an awesome weekend and a fantastic birthday. All right. We are having really great participation in our virtual learning. I am so proud of you. Um, parents, you may have heard the announcement from the Marion County Health Department. Um, they are going to let us return to school on January 4th. Um, so we will do virtual learning next week. And then after winter break, uh, we will return to in-person on January 4th, 2021. And we're really happy um, that the kids will be coming back into the building. So um, no, we've got four more days of virtual learning. I know that a lot of our teachers have planned some fun holiday activities next week. Um, and so um, we look forward to everyone's participation next um, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. And then we'll go on winter break and then we'll be excited to welcome everyone back to school on January 4th. All right, I the whole thing got messed up yesterday and so I was not able to give you yesterday's holiday story. So stick around because there's going to be two holiday stories today. Um, make sure that you are filling out your blue um, winter break reading challenge. And if you're like me, I am up to 12 stories already. I'm getting ready to sneeze. Um, but make sure that you're filling it out. You're writing the titles in. And we will still make this due on the 21st. So even though we'll be back in school, you'll still have some time to read um, two uh, stories over the next couple weeks. So stick around and listen to two great stories today. All right, friends, it has been a fabulous week here at Rose Parks. You have done a wonderful job in your virtual learning, and I am so excited. I love, um, I get into Canvas, and I can see your videos. I listen to you read. I listen to you write. Um, I see your writing. I see your work, and it makes me so very proud and so very happy. So great job. I want you to have a wonderful weekend. Rest, relax. I think it's supposed to be pretty nice, so maybe you can go outside and play. Maybe you can ride your bikes. Um, I hope I'm I hope that's right, but um, it, it's supposed to be, I think it's supposed to be a pretty nice weekend, so enjoy it. Um, as always, I want you to treat people right, but hold on a second. You, you were all getting ready to say, do the right thing, which is what we always say. So today we had a different guest at school, um, someone we don't usually have. And I know they popped into some of the Google Meets that were happening. Um, kind of odd looking, a little furry green. Um, and so he wanted to tape a special message. So um, I'm going to hang up and remind you to treat people right. Do the right thing. And um, then he's going to leave you a message. So 
Enjoy. Have a great weekend. I'll see you all later. Treat people right. Treat people right. And do the right thing. Hi, Rosa Parks stars. I hope you're behaving on this holiday break. Can't wait to see you real soon. Hi, this is Mrs. Mancourt and it's time for our story. Today I'm going to read to you The Gingerbread Baby by Jan Brett. I have my little gingerbread baby ready to go. It was cold outside, but it was warm inside. A fine day for gingerbread, Maddie thought. Maddie's mother put the big blue bowl in the table and lit the stove. And Maddie took down a worn looking cookbook with old fashioned writing on the cover. And he opened it up to the page that said, Gingerbread Boy. They measured and mixed. Maddie rolled the dough into the shape of the gingerbread boy and they popped him in the oven. Bake a full eight minutes. No more, no less, do not peek, the recipe said. Maddie listened to the clock. Tick, tock, tick. One minute, two minute, three minutes, four, five. And then he couldn't wait any longer. He opened the door to take a peek, but instead of a gingerbread boy, out jumped a gingerbread baby. He pranced around the big blue bowl. I'm the gingerbread baby, fresh from the pan. If you want me, catch me if you can. Maddie's mother reached for the gingerbread baby to put him back in the oven, but he ran all around the kitchen. The door opened and in came Maddie's father. What's that delicious smell, he asked, as the gingerbread baby tumbled through his legs and out into the yard. He ran by the tabby cat. She twitched her tail and sprang at him they rolled and tumbled, but that gingerbread baby came out on top. He ran toward the garden wall. The dog caught a whiff of tasty ginger and sniffed along behind him, but the gingerbread baby was halfway up when the dog caught up. He barked and barked as the gingerbread baby climbed over the wall. Maddie was still inside. He heard his mother and father yelling, and he heard the cat meowing and the dog barking, and he heard the gingerbread baby shouting, catch me if you can. But Maddie opened up the worn looking cookbook for a second time. Meanwhile, the gingerbread baby wheeled on down the path in the barn. The goats looked up as he somersaulted through and across their backs. The last one tried to catch him, but the gingerbread baby was too fast. Martha and Madeline were standing by the well when the gingerbread baby stopped to take a drink. They looked at each other and winked. Martha started to talk to him while Madeline tiptoed behind him with a bucket, but they couldn't fool that gingerbread baby. He took a braid from Martha and a braid from Madeline and tied him in a knot and ran on down the road. Back in the house, Maddie stirred and mixed and rolled the dough and shaked it and put it in the pan and put it in the oven. Tick tock tick, eight long minutes and this time he didn't peek. I will catch him if I can, Maddie said to himself. As he was bouncing along, the gingerbread baby saw a farm wagon ahead and he jumped in and settled down for a ride next to Mama Pig. The smell of gingerbread was too much for her. She tossed him high in the air and closed her eyes and opened her mouth, but the gingerbread baby twisted in the air and came down hard on her porky snout. I am the gingerbread baby, too quick for the mother and father, too fast for the cat, the dog and the goats, too clever for Martha and Madeline, and too smart for the mama pig. Who's left? Catch me if you can. Feeling smug, the gingerbread baby strolled along by himself till he came to a bridge that crossed over the village. Just as he got to the middle, he heard running feet behind him and saw a crowd of villagers ahead of him. The gingerbread baby was trapped. He jumped on the railing and backflipped through the air and landed on a chunk of ice floating down the river. The ice bobbed along with the gingerbread baby dancing on top, singing in a loud voice. Look at me, and what do you see? The best gingerbread baby ever. Until his feet got cold, and then he jumped ashore. But who was watching from the trees? It was the fox. He crept up behind the gingerbread baby, ready to eat him up. But the fox couldn't help himself, and he licked his chops. Smack, smack. The gingerbread baby heard him and ran as fast as he could. Just when the fox was catching up, the gingerbread baby saw the milk and cheese man with his can of milk. The perfect hiding place, he thought. He lifted the lid and lowered himself inside. He was so pleased that he sang at the top of his gingerbread voice. Ha ha, he he, you'll never find me. I'm the gingerbread baby, catch me if you can. 
The milk and cheese man heard the gingerbread baby's voice. Who's meddling with my milk? He shouted and lifted the lid. But the gingerbread baby was ready and he jumped up and he tweaked his nose. Now the milk and cheese man, the fox, the villagers, the mama pig, Martha Madeline, the bleeding goats, the barking dog, the meowing cat, the mother and father were all after the gingerbread baby and getting closer and he knew it. That brash baby was not as peppy and proud as he had once been. He sniffed a familiar smell and followed his nose into the woods and he couldn't believe what he saw. There in the middle of the clearing was a gingerbread house frosted with sugar, covered with candy and doors with peppermint handles wide open. He clapped his hands with glee and ran inside. In a tick tock tick, everyone arrived in the clearing, but all they found were a few bits of frosting, a peppermint candy and some crumbs. The father exclaimed, that gingerbread baby finally met his match. I wonder who it was, the mother said. Let's go home and tell Maddie. Hello, Maddie, said his father when they got home. We never did catch that gingerbread baby. All we found were some crumbs in the snow. I see you've been busy, his mother said, looking at the gingerbread house Maddie was holding. Too bad we never caught that gingerbread baby. Too bad, Maddie said. Only Maddie could hear the tiny voice from inside the gingerbread house. I'm the gingerbread baby, lucky as can be, to be living in the house that Maddie made for me. The end. Thanks, guys. We miss you. Have a very, very Merry Christmas.